Saturday Night Theatre. The King's Colours, a play for radio by Roy Belitho, with Norman Bowler, Neil Stacey and Mary Larkin. The play is set in Cornwall in the summer of 1644, during the time of the Civil War. The King's Colours. What is it like to die? If someone could just tell me. Perhaps I won't die. Perhaps is a very big word, though. I sound like a child. Yet I'm a musketeer wearing the king's colours. A man. A soldier. But I'm lonely for the warmth of love. Last night, I had some strong thoughts on dying. And I thought, there is no real purpose in dying like this. It is so unjust. I've striven faithfully with musket, prayer and blood for what I deem to be the truth. But I've seen so much of what I've been taught to revere struck down and destroyed, put away forever. I grasp to feel your hand, to touch, to hear, to see, and understand why it is life must be continued alone in another land. Celia, I shall go to my grave loving you. Loving you. What day is it? Thursday. It's Thursday, I think. What's the weather like? The weather outside. Warm, sunny. The summer of 1644, Jacko. I'm thirsty. Oh, to walk and walk. Breathe the warm summer air. See the poppies, the marigolds, the trees. Oh, my leg aches. My leg aches something terrible. The harvest. What sort of harvest will it be this year? Oh, I forget. I do forget the days. You're a good man, Jack O'Thomas. And a brave one. What good's bravery now? Tell me that, Corporal. What good's bravery now? Oh, Richard, not Corporal. Call me Richard. Call me Richard, please. We fought for the King. But what did the King know of us? What do we care, eh? Can he tell me that? I only know I felt I was under the King's personal protection. Yes, I'm proud to wear his cloth. Long live the king! God save King Charles! Oh, and God curse them Puritan dogs. Rebel dogs. I hate them. I hate them. Oh, I do not hate them. You don't? What, after no, all? No, we... not hate. I have seen God's fingerprints on the faces of our enemies, Jack. No. I have shouted love, brotherhood. And then I have killed. Oh, God forgive me. I have killed. Yet I've killed without hating. Uh, Tis them or us. I have fought to uphold the church, the bishops, the prayer books. Uh, but to still them or us. I see the killing and the devastation. And I feel anguish. Real anguish. I see all the brutality. Yet I think of a loving God. Isn't that strange? I suppose you think that's strange, don't you, Jackal? Everything's strange in war. Oh, you can't think too much about it. Oh, you can't think much. God. My God. I accept the resurrection. Symbol of the triumph of love. While all about me, violence has become commonplace. Still, I have to. Them Puritans started it. If it weren't for them, I'd be home. Working on Mr. Radford's farm. My superiors want to convince me that our enemies are moved by mindless bloodlust. That they seek to kill and destroy only for the sake of it. That's right. No. No, Jacko, that's not it. Eh? It is not so. What are we saying? I see them as people. People who found a new comforter. People mistaken, but people with strong beliefs nevertheless. I don't understand. I don't understand that talk. Oh! 
bloody leg. It is aching terrible. What is so sad about civil war is that it divides families, as it has divided mine. I ain't got no family, nobody, not no more. My brother Jonas fights for the parliamentary army. What about your parents? Who do they support then? Oh, they're for the king. My mother and my father and my sister Mary. Yes, they are for the king. Me, I got nobody. My parents is dead. My father was killed by a Puritan sword. Them bastards, they killed my father. Well, that's what made me start all this. I never killed no more than chickens and pigs for I joined this army. Now I got used to killing men. Sergeant Kerslake. Sir? Now, you are aware, I believe, that we hold your brother captive. Yes, sir. He is under guard in that cow shed over there, together with another prisoner. Yes, sir. They are facing execution. You're going to hang them? That was my decision, Sergeant, yes. I see. How do you feel about that? If that is your decision... But what are your feelings? He is your brother, is he not? I think of the cause first, sir. Try not to let personal feelings intrude. <laughs> You're a cold fish, Sergeant Kerslake. What is his name? My brother. Richard, sir. Richard John Kerslake. Younger or older? Younger, sir. He's 23. I'm 25. Mm. He killed five of my men before we took him. Five of my best men with his musket. And the other prisoner killed two of my men in cold blood with his pike. That is why I decided to hang them both. Of course, your brother has deadly skill with a musket, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It's something I can't understand. He's so opposed to killing. Always has been. In fact, I've always thought of him as rather soft. Soft? Soft? But he's a deeply religious man, sir. That's why I can't understand what happened to him. Your brother has uncanny accuracy with a musket. I could wish he was on our side, Sergeant. He doesn't believe in what we believe in, sir. He believes in the king? Yes, sir. And not the people? Yes. That is why I no longer think of him as a brother. You're very loyal to the cause, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. But your brother, how loyal would he be to the king, I wonder, if... Well, just supposing his family were threatened. I don't know, sir. I'm not sure what you mean, sir. He's not married? Uh, no, sir. Uh, but he loves one Celia Harris of Liscard. I see. Sergeant, I have an idea. Yes, sir. Listen. Listen carefully. Perhaps it's easy, really to die. Everything distant, no pain, no fire, no noise, just peace, just darkness and peace. Dying is easy. To think that it all ends. Yes. Yet sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing something good, I think it can never end. I often think, yes, I'm going to die. Just like that. I think of my father, you see, and the way he died. So suddenly. Then I think I'm going to die. And... Oh, Richard. It makes me afraid. Oh, don't be afraid, Celia, my love. You will live a good, long life. I know you will. But you... Now you have joined the... The colours? It's something I must do, Celia. War. It is so horrible. Yes. But when it's all over, we'll be married. We were to have married on my 20th birthday. A month ago. It won't be long, my love. Be patient. Be brave and patient. And wait for me. Wait till it's all over. My brother fought under Sir Bevel Grenville at Stratton. A pikeman, wasn't he, your brother? Yes. He was badly wounded. He will never go to war again. I'm sorry. It was a great victory for the Royalists at Stratton. Hundreds of men died. Yes. And now you have to go to war. I believe in the church. 
I believe in God. I believe in the king. In spite of what he has done? Yes. I hate war. But I must try and defend what I believe in. I cannot stand back and see what I value being destroyed. Sir Bevel is a great hero now. My brother talks of him as though he were God himself. Oh, he was a great noble gentleman, and he died bravely on Lansdowne Hill. He died? My brother tells me that King Charles has addressed a special letter to all Cornish royalists, thanking them for their loyalty and valour in battle. That is so. The king knows how well the Cornish royalists have fought for him. When a man goes to war, he sees only the glory. A woman sees nothing but the grief. What can he see? Outside? I see... I see soldiers. Puritan soldiers. Their uniforms are dirty, ragged. There's a guard just outside. He wears a cap with a broken peak. Can he see the gallows? Is the rope in position? I don't see any rope. No. I cannot see any rope. Oh. Wonder where they'll hang us then? I don't know. Here, Corporal. Richard. Afraid to die, are he? I've often thought of how I might die. Yet never did I think it would be like this. But no. I'm not afraid to die. I do not want to die. My soul yearns to live. I want to savour the sweetness of life. But I'm not afraid of death. There is no end to death. I suppose you'll start praying soon, won't he? I'm always praying, Jacko. Well, I suppose God do know what he's doing. If he want to take me now, it is all right be me. You see, on the other side of death, we shall see the full pattern of life. Not just our own, but the life of the whole human race. You see, Jacko, there's a kind of weaver's loom in things. As life is spun out, we cannot see what it's becoming. But there'll come a day when the pattern of things will be clear. Then we'll see not only God, but ourselves. And we'll know, even as we shall be known, all the suffering, all the killing. Why do God allow all that? Can he tell me that, Richard? Jacko, suffering comes because of the greed and ignorance of men, not from God. And the way out of suffering is through it, not by avoiding it or denying its existence. You heard the voice of God, have you, Richard? Me, I never heard his voice. I hear the voice of God every day, Jacko. What do he say? He tells me to wait, to be patient. I hear the voice of God... It tells me he is just. And do we tell he not to hate them Puritans? In a way, yes. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Listen, they're coming to take us. This is it, then. Coming to take us. Royalist prisoners, your hour of execution has arrived. It's all right. We shall be in the care of the Almighty. For your guilt, you want to be punished with your lives. No man fights a war without guilt. <laughs> How are you... Nerves this morning. Now you're so close to death. Death is no mystery. But you must be afraid. No. No? Oh, you don't speak the truth, prisoner. You must be afraid. To die in silence. Silence? That is best. To die in silence. No cannon fire, no shouting. Die silent. Fade into darkness. Easily said. Easily done. Preacher. Were you a preacher before you joined the army? I was a school teacher. Also a church warden. I suppose you think that God is on your side, on the side of the royalists who fight for the king. I think God is on every side. How so? It pleases God to bless, and it pleases God to damn. We're God's tools. What? Well, all of us is God's tools. God's tools? Yes. We are played with in his divine fingers, then cast out when our work is done. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour and another unto dishonour? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory? On the vessels of mercy. You're a 
You're a strange man, prisoner. But you do make people think. Everything's gone mad. Men killing one another. But he's made me feel there's some answer to it all. There is an answer. And that is the downfall of the king. Nothing can be right until the king is put down forever. No. Silence. He's even made me think the Puritans are human. Yes. Imagine that. Me, you've killed them and lacked it. He's made me think that. That you're human. There's even something good in you. <laughs> you interest me, schoolteacher. Obviously, you have thought the whole thing out clearly. I only know what I believe in. Yeah, what you believe in has brought you to this. To death? Yes. Tell me this. You do not seem to fear death. Why, I swear you almost welcome it. Why do you want to die? I don't want to die. No one does. You act as if you do. No. I don't want to die. I want so much to live. Could I break your spirit, I wonder? Could anything break your spirit? Will the sight of the gallows break your spirit, perhaps? I think you're a brave man, school teacher. Guard. Oh, sir, I, I was just I've got to, to see the prisoners. Wait outside. Yes, sir. I'm Captain Corlays, and you are enemies of the people. I ordered you to be hanged this morning. Have you anything to say, you? Have you anything to say? No, sir. And you? No. Nothing to say. You are foolish people. You people who defend the old ways, the stupid, evil ways of king and courtiers, of bishops. Why do you bother to fight on? You're going to lose anyway. You're beaten already. The king will die soon. Yes, soon. A lot sooner than he thinks. He is a tyrant. I hate the king. Oh, if only it were he and not you I was hanging this summer morning. But it has to be two humble soldiers. Death to the king, that is my wish. To renounce violence, to make peace with ourselves, that is mine. Peace? There can be no peace until we have rid the land of tyranny. And we have torn the living skin off the people, and left them with bare tissues, muscles, and nerves quivering. So? So isn't that right? We are tearing the old skin off and giving it a new one. And to do that, the king must be removed by political action. By force. It is mass action. Which leads to civil war. With us, the objective result is everything. Our country cannot bear the oppression any longer. The regime must be eradicated. The evil ended for all time. And those who try to defend the old ways must pay with their lives. As I shall pay with mine. I ordered your execution, and it should by now have taken place. Why do you imagine you continue to be alive? But no, of course, you can have no idea. You, Kerslake, you personally killed five of my best men. Is that not a fact? If you say so. I do say so. I'm also told that you killed them in extraordinary fashion. My men who took you prisoner said they had never seen such marksmanship. Where did you learn to handle a musket, sir? Who taught you? No one taught me. How long have you been so efficient with a musket? Since I joined the colours. It is surprising what one can do if the need is great. The need to kill. The need to defend what is right. Well, I should very much like to witness your skill myself. A demonstration, please. Guard, bring the prisoner Kerslake this way. My men were right. Your skill with the musket is extraordinary. I so don't understand the purpose. If I am to be Exceptional. Killed. You're exceptional. Tell me this. How did it feel, the waiting, waiting for death in that car shed? You look perplexed, Kersley. I cannot conceal it, Captain. I am. Ah. Well, what do you have in mind? Obviously, you have something in mind. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of granting you freedom. You jest, of course. I never jest. But first, tell me... How it feels, soldier, waiting for death? I think of Jesus' words. Oh, what are they? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You believe that to be true? With absolute certainty. God's answer to death is life. The Bible preaches a faith based on life, not death. It teaches us that what appears to be death only seems so. 
that the real fact is life eternal. Nevertheless, you still wish to live? Yes. Then life and freedom will be yours. If you will do something for us. <sighs> for you? Why should I do anything like that? I think you will, when you hear the terms. Ah, the terms. Yes. You see, I wish you to dispose of someone. Kill someone? Correct. Now listen, Royalist soldier, and listen well. I'm assigning you to kill a certain man. Kill him with your musket. You will go to Lost Willow, and if you successfully complete your assignment, you and your fellow soldier will go free. Of course I cannot do that. I think you will, when I tell you more. When I tell you something about your family. My family? What has my family got to do with this? I will tell you in a minute. But first... Why me? Why me, Captain? Because of your remarkable skill with the musket, that's why. You're the one man I know who could make a success of this plan. Now, from a carefully concealed position in a house in Lost Willow, where lives a staunch Puritan, you will shoot at and, I hope, kill this man. And who is this man? He is the king, Charles Stuart. Captivity has not made me lose my mind, Captain. I trust not. Nevertheless, I think you will do what I ask. The king? The king in the streets of Lost with you? I know more than you do, Royalist soldier. I know you see that he is due to appear in person tomorrow in Lost with you. My information is correct. He has captured Rostormal Castle. <laughs> that will not be for long. Oh, no. Oh, you're wasting your time, Captain. Kill my own king? You're mad. Listen. You have a father and a mother and a sister, Mary? Yes. And, I believe, you have a sweetheart. One Celia Harris of Liscard? Did you hear me? Answer me. You are hoping to marry this Celia Harris? Yes. She and your parents and your sister are all under surveillance. They are in your hands. Indeed they are that. And if you do not do what I ask tomorrow, they will be hanged. One by one. Your eyes are closed, Corporal Kerslake. You are perhaps imagining the scene. I mean what I say. Well? I do not believe you. I am a liar. You think I lie. What a man will do to see his glorious vision. You think I am trying to trick you, don't you? Take me back to the cowshed. The cowshed, which is my cell. You're as good as dead already, you know. I'm prepared to die. But what of your family, your sweetheart? If you refuse me, Corporal Kerslake, you will have murdered them. It's no use, Captain. Please. You think I am lying? All right. You stubborn fool, if it's proof you want, I'll give it to you. Guard! Yeah? Here. Sir? Take the prisoner back. Lord Barco to see you, sir. Ah, yes. A good day to you, my lord. Ah, Captain Corlys, I've been considering your plan. It is certainly an extraordinary one. Extraordinary things do happen in war, my lord. Mm. Have you chosen your man? Yes, sir. And who is he, this exceptional marksman of whom you talk? His name is Corporal Kerslake of the Royalist Army, a prisoner of ours. What? A Royalist? Have you taken leave of your senses, Captain? No, no my lord. I have made my plans most carefully. The king to die by the hand of a Royalist? What madness is this? He is the only musketeer I know who could succeed. I have tested him, and truly he is remarkable. I do not have a man in my company who has yet mastered the firing of a musket as well as this soldier. It is not easy, as you know. If I had such a marksman, I would, of course, use him, but... Time is short, my lord. The king is here in Cornwall now. If we do not act at once, this great chance will be lost. Yes, I see that. But look here, Captain. How can you force a royalist soldier to shoot his king? By giving him no choice. By telling him that if he refuses to do as we instruct, we will take the lives of his family and sweetheart. If the king dies, his loved ones will live. And the soldier? Once the deed is done, it will matter little what happens to him. There is much doubt in this scheme, Captain. But I fear it will fail. The killing of the king by one of his own musketeers. Nevertheless, it may be tried. Yes, my lord. Also, it is a most cruel scheme of yours. Your soul, perhaps, craves importance in life to be responsible for the killing of Charles Stuart? We must win this war, my lord. It is part of my duty to be cruel. Tell me this, Captain. Do you see yourself as a weapon more than a person? I am an instrument of the parliamentarians, yes, but also an instrument of God. 
and I have learned to kill because it is necessary. Hmm. Tell me this also, Captain. How exactly do you see this conflict? I see it as a struggle between two principles, the one being the common right of humanity and the other the divine right of kings. The royalists see themselves as popes have seen themselves, as the vice-regents of Christ upon earth. They say, you toil and work and earn bread and we will eat it. The king bestrides the people and lives by the fruit of their labours. It is a tyrannical principle and must end. What we are doing is right, my lord. It is right. And I have profound confidence in the holiness of our aims. I believe what our great leader Oliver Cromwell tells us, that we are regiments of godly men. You are a good officer, Captain Corlys. Go to work at once. We have no time to lose. What is it, sweet love? I am so beautifully happy. And I too. We have kissed and drawn apart from the world into a world of our own. But not once have I heard you say, I love you. Until now, this moment... I do love you, Celia. I'm yours only. Wherever I am is yours. Put your arms around me. Yes, dear love. Will you marry me? Oh, yes. Yes. Dear Richard, yes. I hope I'm permitted to remember this moment. The afternoon on which you made me yours. For always, my love. What are you thinking of, Richard? Remembering. Just remembering. <sighs> I tried to get a bit of sleep. But tis no good. I can't sleep. What did that captain want? The captain? Oh, he wants... He tried to persuade me to change my allegiance, Jackal. Change? Why, I must be mad. To think of you changing? Why, it is unthinkable. Yes. Christ, I wish they get it over with. Why don't them hang us and have done with? Why are them waiting like they say? Why? Here they come. Jonas. I want to talk to you. Guard, uh, take the other prisoner outside. Hey, Sergeant. Come on, you. Out. Are you going to hang me now, then? No, not yet. Why not, eh? Why not? Why don't he kill me now? What are we waiting for? Hang me! Kill me! Get it over with! Kill me, damn you! What are we waiting for? Come with me! Come on! Go, Wait. Jacko! Come on! Well, my brother. Yes, Jonas? It gives me no pleasure to see you here like this. Oh, if only I could have made you understand in the beginning. I understand that you have killed women and children. That way we'll win the war, my brother. An enemy is most vulnerable where he's most weak. And women and children are his weakest spot. Kill enough of them, and the enemy tires of war. Then he'll talk peace. How you have changed, Jonas. You seem almost to feast on the killing. Look at it this way. Everyone we kill brings us that much closer to victory. And we can all go home. If we kill enough now, we'll never have to fight another war. The shrieking of men fills my head with a roaring that will never go away. It's war, brother. Kill or be killed. And I know only one thing. That I am fighting for the cause, for a glorious ideal. We're fighting for a new world. Huh. Nobody's going to think about a few dead when the world sees what we build. Can't you see it that way, my brother? Huh? Can't you see? I see anguish. I see good men dying all around me. But don't you understand? Men dying is a cheap price for glory. Our cause makes anything we do just. Think of that, Richard. The justice lies in our reasons. Not in our acts. Oh, your golden dream. Not a dream. It's happening. I hope God is merciful. God? Where is your God now? Eh? Now, when you need him. Where is he? Eh? Where is he? He is near. As he always is. God is dead, brother. God is dead. What has happened to you, Jonas? What has happened to your mind? You say God is dead, but you've made your own God out of darkness, out of misery and pain. You reek of blood and fire. This is the way it has to be. No, no. You're making a cell out of our beautiful land, a cell. We are building a new and better world. You're putting chains on people. Around their necks, in their hearts, chains. Our principles are right. Our people are more unhappy now than before. Our will is pure. We bring truth. In your mouths, everything becomes a lie. We bring hope. You destroy. 
Once we were close, Jonas, you and I, we were happy. What has happened to that happiness? And that peace? Well, why is it you king's men always talk of the past as if it were beautiful? Hmm? It's best to crush the past. The sooner the better. What do you want of me, Jonas? Why have you come here? I had something to tell you. Oh? It'll upset you. I'm waiting. Our mother and father and our sister Mary are being held captive. Not far from here. What? And Celia, too. Celia? Richard, they'll die if you do not do what Captain Corlace wants you to do. Richard, you must do what he says. You must kill King Charles. Captain Corlace believes you to be the right man for this mission. The way you handle a, a musket, it's almost uncanny. It'll take great accuracy. Now, the captain... The captain? To... The captain is a heretic. War has brought him to madness. But you have to do it, Richard. Our family, your senior, the one you love, they mustn't die. Now, what's the life of one man against the lives of those you love? So help me, God. I do not know if my own brother speaks the truth. I speak the truth. The king? He is a tyrant. And he must die, as our family must live. Now, we'll all live if you do this one thing, Richard. How can you ask me to do such a thing? How can you think I would do it? There is a tide that's sweeping away the evils of this country. The rising tide of the people's long-lost freedom. Now, you cannot stop it. Try as you will. In the end, you'll lose. Try keeping the old ways of tyranny, and you must lose. You may deflect the tide for a moment, Richard. You may fight in rivers of blood. But in the end, you'll fall back exhausted in your own blood and leave mankind to liberty and freedom. Well, will you do it? Leave me now, Jonas. I must think. Leave me alone, You please. don't have long. If you refuse, our parents, our sister, and Celia Harris will die. And if I fail? If I fail to kill King Charles? You won't fail. I've seen your skill with a musket. You're a fine shot. But if I do fail... Then it'll be death for you and our family. Leave me now. Leave me. drums, Jonas. I heard the drums, as though they're summoning men to death. Hearts grow quick, dear sister, as the time of action crowds in. The beating of the drum and the beating of our hearts in time. It's the most glorious thing ever. Our hearts beat fast, the drum beats fast. God be with you, Jonas. Goodbye, Mary. Here is Mother. Jonas. It's time to go, Mother. I have cried for you, Jonas. I had to cry. Your brother... I must serve the cause, Mother. Oh, forgive me, Jonas. Forgive me. I know you don't like to see me cry, and I promise I won't. Not now. <laughs> Jonas, my son, you're not the way you used to be. Mother, Time I... was when you would cry, Jonas. Don't you remember? You don't remember. I'm sorry. It's just that... Jonas, you're still very young. I've been thinking of you this morning, of the time you were born, my firstborn. It was the answer to the prayer I'd made to the Lord that I'd have a son, and I did. God gave me you, Jonas. You were no ordinary child either. You were a gift from God. Oh, how I wish then that my dear father had lived to see the day. Oh, Jonas, I love you so much. When you're away, I know you're still close, so close to me, asleep, dreaming. Dream about God's will, Jonas. Yes, Mother. And I'll dream about my duty. Goodbye, Mother. Richard, 
Yes, Jacko. You're not asleep then? No. I cannot sleep this night. Nor me. When I drop off, nightmares do possess me. It's a silent night. Uh, it is warm. I'm sweating. This could be our last night on this earth. Jacko, I'll tell you what's been bothering me. We could go free tomorrow if... Hey? Captain Corliss has offered me a job. For you? What, what do we mean? And if I do it successfully, he's promised to set us free. Ah, the promise of a parliament man. The word of a Cromwellian. Oh, I think he means what he says. For if I do what he wants me to do, he'll become a hero. What do we want you to do? Shoot the king. What? King Charles has just won a great victory at Restormwood Castle. And tomorrow he will walk in triumph through the streets of Lothwithiel. The captain wants to conceal me in a position where I can kill him with my musket. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, my Jesus Christ, it's a raving mad idea. Fancy asking you. Well, it seems he admires my skill with a musket. Oh, so that's why he wanted to see you use it. I'm afraid so. Well, what did he tell him? That we'd sooner die? My brother Jonas has told me something which, if true, is alarming. That my parents and sister and Celia are being held prisoner. Oh, my God, no. And if I refuse to carry out his mad scheme, he will hang them. Oh, my soul. But I think the captain is lying. I think my brother lies too. But what if it is true? The swine will kill him. Dirty Puritan swine, he got no mercy, nor any good feeling anywhere. Oh, Jacko, I wish I knew. I wish I could be sure. But if they really are being held prisoner, would... That is, I mean, would he really shoot the king? Richard, could he do that? Could he? How could I see my loved ones murdered, Jacko? But the king? Yes, the king. Morning, sir. It's a good morning. Yes, a good morning. Sun shining nice and bright. A day to remember. How are the prisoners, guard? Quiet, sir. They've been quiet since I came on duty anyway. Good. Oh, how I live for this day, to see the death of the tyrant king. His has been a wicked reign. He has persecuted, he has lied. He broke the petition of right. He promised never to raise taxes. He promised never to force loans without the consent of Parliament. He promised never to rule his subjects by military law nor put a man to prison without lawful reason. All these things he promised. And all these promises he broke. This day, the day of his death, will be a great day for the people, for all true Cromwellians. You think our prisoner will do it? He has to. Our plan must be successful. Yes, sir. This will be our day, young soldier. Indeed, yes, sir. I believe it to be. Last night I heard what I thought was the wind, but it was my soldiers whispering in the dark, talking to each other, murmuring to themselves, telling themselves that this day will lead the way to final and illustrious victory. Tomorrow, soldier, we will march on to lust with you. Our men will put on bravery with their caps, and we will win. Yes, sir. We will win. How long have you been with us, soldier? Three months, sir. <laughs> Raw. Still raw. Well, are you ready for tomorrow's battle? I think so, sir. Frightened? A bit, to tell the truth, but I That's know... That's all right. I get frightened sometimes, too. You, sir? Thinking about it. That's the worst. Thinking of everything ahead. When the battle starts, you don't think anymore. You fought at Stratton last year, didn't you, sir? I did, under Lord Stamford. We lost heavily, alas. Our powder ran short. We fought with pikes and swords. We lost then. But things are changing now. We are winning the war now. Make no mistake, the royalists are breaking up. Soldiers, tired of battle, are returning to their homes. A mood of defeat hangs over the royalists. The end will not be long. I believe that, sir. Look, that young soldier over there. You, drummer boy, come here. Sir? Tomorrow, drummer boy, you will beat a sure, steady, ever faster rhythm to stir us, to get the blood racing up the body. You know, do you, that you will lead the army tomorrow? Sir. Listen. If you beat slow tomorrow, the hearts will beat slow in the men. 
They will lag. They will drowse on their muskets. And they will sleep forever after that in the fields, their hearts slowed by a drummer boy and dropped by enemy powder. But if you beat your drum fast, our men will march up in a long line and we'll come on like a great wave breaking on a shore, like a long wave rolling in. And that's what I want tomorrow, drummer boy. That's what we need. Beat your drum and make the head proud, the spine stiff, the jaw resolute. Put steel armour all over our soldiers. For blood moving fast in them makes men feel as if they've put on steel. Oh. God bless you, boy. Tomorrow you will be the leader of our army. Under the scent of a green tree, I sit dreaming of my love. When the wind in the garden takes up the theme, and left and right, and all about the flowers, the grasses, speak to me with quiet voices. And even the stars above join in. And the lovely odors of a thousand flowers come to me in endless waves as they break upon my eyes, my lips, my throat. Oh, Richard. Dearest Celia. No matter what happens, I'll never forget these mornings here. We'll always come here. All our lives will come. Yes. We'll bring our children. When we're old, we'll still have this place together. Perhaps we could buy this spot one day. If we can get the money, we could build a little house just here. Just here? In this very place? Ah, wonder. Wonder how it will all end. How? How? Well, if both sides believe in the other side, we'll just give up. And soon. And the war will be over. And they'll all go home. Tis all wrong, really. Fat and wars. Wrong as a head put on hand side front and a man marching backward through life. Yes. Huh. Mr. Radford at the farm never lacked me fighting with the King's army. But I haven't fighting with no army right now. Wonder what my father would have thought. Seeing us here waiting to die at the hands of the Puritans. Oh, Cutting down them Puritans. John Henry Thomas, he was called, my father. He had a big laugh. And you know something, Richard? A witch woman come and read his hand sometime. More than once. She told him where to look for a lost cow once. And once she told him my mother would die before she reached 30. She were right, that old witch woman. And she said my father was going to get killed too. My father, he laughed at her old witch woman. But she were right. Some do say tis best the dead is for God. You don't believe that, do we, Richard? No, Jacko, I do not. And some do say you can remember too much about the dead. You take where I live. Tis haunted. Hundreds of these haunts all round. Some say people should forget dead folk so as everybody can rest. Them and us, the living and the dead. You can get much in common, I suppose, except that the living will die and the dead has lived. Yes, some people do say as long as you think about somebody dead, you keep him from resting. You stir him up, see, so he's, he's got to get up and drift round like. Can't sleep, see. Me, I believe in ghosts. Seen them too. That night at Stratton, I got shot in the foot. Took off my belt, wrapped it round my leg to stop the bleeding, and I yelled for help, and then I just yelled for water or something. Well, then I lay down to die. Knowed I was going to die, see, so I just lay down to wait for it. But I didn't die. I got picked up and took back wounded. Lord, Lord, that was a time. All that screaming and dust and noise, and the way men cried for their mothers in the night, and dead men farting, 
It is. There was a dead man lying close to me, and in the night he farted. I swear to God he did. Reckon there was plenty of ghosts round that night. Ghosts of men that died the day afore, and, and ghosts jumping loose from men that just died. Well, I swear I could feel my own ghost trying to get loose from my body. And I could see other ghosts, too, plain as I see you now. And you know something else? Reckon I could go right back to Stratton now and call them up, them ghosts. Reckon they wouldn't like it, neither. Still, it will all be forgot one day. It will never be forgotten. Don't you think so, then? I do. Pretty soon there don't be nothing but wind. You take a hundred year from now. You give Stratton and them other places a hundred year. Reckon there won't even be a ghost left, then. All them men that died, and there won't be nothing. A hundred years, and we'll all be at rest then. All dead and dust. Perhaps it's a good thing to rest. Just be resting under the old earth. And maybe somebody will stir me up now and again. Wouldn't mind that myself, come to think of it. Be good to see how things are going. Sometimes I, I, I do think about dead people I knowed. Sometimes I think about old Walker and Mudge, dead and buried these last ten year. Blacksmith he was. Lord, he was a big man, was Walker. I tell you what I seen once, with me own eyes. There was a horse that kicked him when he was putting on his shoe. But you know what old Walker did? Why, he grabbed that old horse by the leg and picked him up and heaved. And you know what? Why, that great horse just fell over on his ass. <laughs> Truly, he was a strong man, that orker Mudge. Strongest man I've ever seen is Anthony Payne. Oh, yes, the Cornish giant. He was at Stratton, too. Great chap, over seven foot. Good job he run our side. Richard, what are you going to do? Made up your mind, have you? I don't know, Jacko. I feel so helpless. If only... I've brought someone to see you, prisoner. Oh, Mary! My God! Little Mary! Richard! Little sister, tell me the worst. Tell me. Speak. Richard, I... The truth is, she is here to confirm what I told you already. That we hold your parents, your sister, and Celia Harris under guard. And they will be executed by the dawn light if you fail to comply with my wishes. Mother, father, Celia. What he says is true, Richard. We will die if you refuse him. Oh, Richard, you will have to do this thing. I feel as helpless as a twig in a whirlpool. Will you do it? There is no choice. You will hasten the end of the war by this action. You and your family can then live in peace. In peace? If by my hand the king dies, then I myself will die too. I could not live the rest of my days with the knowledge that I had murdered the king. No, Richard. Another man. What difference does it make? A man is a man no more, no less you've killed before. In action. But this, no. I cannot live with myself after this. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Whatever becomes of us, Mary, is in the hands of God, who controls the destinies of all of us, including the fanatics, the demented, and the saints. My dear brother. Oh, God. The father of all living, I beg you to forgive this terrible thing I have to do. You will do it. I have no choice. Then come, young woman. Enough has been said. It is time now for action. Guard, feed the prisoners. History? It is a strange thing. It is not just dates. It's so much more. It is accomplishment, frustration, victory, loss, hope, despair, love, hate. It is the dust left in this world as a million, million human lives slide between the millstones of death from this earthly granary of God. It is us, all of us. It's worked. 
Richards has agreed to do it. To kill the king. The king he believes in. It'll help to end this war. Jonas, I can't help thinking of what we've done. We've deceived our brother. We're not prisoners of the Puritans, mother and father and I. And we're not threatened with our lives. We're Puritans ourselves now. And Richard believes us to be royalists. It has to be done. Captain Corey... But when is... Richard finds out... Jonas, when he finds out we lied to him, what then? The king must be destroyed and we must win, Mary. At all costs. You know how important that is. You're a Puritan. You see our way. But Richard... He fights for the enemy. He is our enemy. He is still our brother. Well, think of the cause, Mary. Think of all the things I told you. Yes, I think of that. I believe in you, Jonas, and the cause. I also think of Richard, and I feel such guilt and sadness. Well, you must not feel guilty, my sister. This is the only possible way we could get Richard to do it. And Captain Corlace is a man of honour. He will release Richard. If he succeeds. Oh, he will succeed. He must. But if he fails, he will die. He will die if he refuses. But don't think of failure, Mary. Think only of success. The king being shot through his evil heart. Richard, who professes to be appalled by killing, has nevertheless developed great skill with a musket. He possesses deadly accuracy. He's killed many men already. Good men, Mary. Think of that. Good men die on both sides. Sometimes it is necessary in war to kill people you're fond of. It is the way of war. I'd kill Richard today. He's an enemy. After the war, how would you feel then? After all this? I don't know. I can't answer that. After the war, there'll be so much to do. Life will be different. Things will never be the same again. Oh, things will be better. That's what we're aiming for. A better life for all people. I mean in our own family. Since he joined the King's army, I no longer think of Richard as my brother. May God in heaven understand and forgive. There is no need to be forgiven. We haven't sinned. We believe it our right to overthrow the monarchy, to rid the land of treachery and perfidy. Oh, Mary, our ultimate victory will go down in history as one of the noblest triumphs. The king has used the vilest means to further his own interests and those of his wicked henchmen. He's used brute force, terror, subjugation to stifle the voice of the people. But the people's soul burns with revenge to break its chains and smash down its enemies. Yet the people of Lostwithiel will welcome the king today after his victory at Restormal. Not all the people of Lostwithiel. Not all by far. We have many supporters in the town. We'll soon have many more. Those who support the king now are fools. They're blind. But they'll see it our way before long. You wait. Yes. Yes, Jonas. Bring the prisoner. The time has come. We're ready to leave. Come now, Corporal. Come. I shall never know peace again. A true aim, a shot, and it will be all over. So quick. Yes. So quick. We're ready to take you to the outskirts of Lostwith Hill, where one of my men will guide you to the house. Who is this man? He's one of my soldiers, but he'll be dressed as a yeoman. It's a dastardly pot you have devised. Again, I must warn you, Kerslake, if you refuse or fail, your family and sweetheart will die. And if I succeed, I have to trust you to keep your word. I am a man of my word. And you have my word as an officer and a Cornish gentleman. You will go free. It is not for my sake I want your pledged word. It's for my family and Celia Harris and my friend Jacko Thomas. They will be free. You have my word. Captain, I'm a proud man. But if I thought it would make you change your mind, I would abase myself. I would fall on my knees and beg you to release my loved ones without my having to do this shocking thing. They have never indulged in war. In politics, in violence. It must be done. I have given much thought, and it is the perfect opportunity. And we cannot miss such an opportunity. It has to be done now. And you are the one musketeer who cannot fail. There will be many people. It will take your unerring aim. You have considered, I suppose, the possibility of my being captured by my own side. After I have fired. That is your concern. But there should be no danger. Our plan has been carefully made. So, just let me repeat what I've already told you. You will take your position in a well-concealed place in a house that belongs to a man called Opie. He fights in our army, of course. There is a back door which leads to a courtyard. You can quickly dispose of your musket and then find your way into the street, where, as a royalist soldier, you will not be noticed in the commotion that will follow the death of the king. And you are sure the king will pass this house? Of course I'm sure. How can you know so much? <laughs> you would like to know that. You would like to know how I've learned of Charles Stewart's movements later today? But of course you will not tell me. But I know. Oh, yes, I know. You've been told from the mouth of a traitor? But perhaps a lie. No one lies to me. 
Don't argue with me, Corporal. I do not argue. I give orders. It's a habit like any other. I realize it's pointless to argue with you, Captain Corlys. In circumstances such as these, you have an unanswerable argument backed by force. But tell me this before we go, would you? How long has it been in your mind, the slaying of the king? I have read to it. Um, I have... But that is no concern of yours. Listen to me. Soon the Puritans will rule this country and give it the benefit of a good, strong hand. A strong hand, but a fair hand. Unlike your king. Your own doomed king. What a king! Why, he has less idea of ruling than my horse. I could have told him that you don't rule powerful bishops by appeasing them. You tame them or get rid of them. He has had his chance to make a people of us all and lost it. I have heard peasants say, do not be too sure. Don't make me lose my temper again. My God, men of your calm can send decent men mad. Listen, the king you fight for believes in the principle of divine right to administer the realm as he thinks fit without consulting the wishes of his subjects. You believe that to be right? No one has the right of God to rule the world as he sees fit. Hold your tongue for a minute and listen. We will have the greatest ruler on earth, Oliver Cromwell. God is the greatest ruler. Cromwell! We believe in Cromwell. Why can't you see why? You're an intelligent man. Why can't you see? We have never been properly ruled. So let us see what the change will do for us. If you live long enough. I will live to see it. I will live to see that day. Indeed, I will. But it takes a long time to change a whole people. If ever. Do you think so? I think not. Under Cromwell, we have been given hammers at the ends of our arms. And they can split stones. They will make this country into one piece. We will take all the stones lying about you and your supporters, all you little pieces, and make a fortress out of them. And we will have one master, Cromwell. Cromwell. And we will have one set of laws, ours. This country will be all Puritan. It will think Puritan and do things the Puritan way. Captain, you cannot kill all royalists, however much you try. The country is made up of many people and they rarely think alike. A government of and by and for one single part of the entire community will never survive. Believe me, stubborn as we are, we have found ways of living together. It's a human art. I don't think Puritans have learned it yet. The Puritan way must rule. After this war is over, when the Saxons finished beating the Danes, they settled down and lived together. They became a people. And thank God England has found a master who will hammer her into shape. I do believe you Puritans have begun to think of war as an adventure. Enough. Enough of this talk. It's useless talking to you. Come, do what you have to do. Or let the ones you love perish on the scaffold. William? William? Mm. Mm. I thought you were asleep. No, Anna, I'm awake. I've brought you some cowslip wine. Would you like some now? Some of my cowslip wine? No, not now. You look tired, William. I am. Well, I'll just put your wine down here in case you feel like it in a minute. You've been to see Mother? I have, yes, and she's looking well. She's looking... Why, I swear there's almost a glow about her today. I remember the apple trees in our garden back home. And there was a great big one that was gnarled and full of bumps. It was the oldest in the garden and we loved it best of all. I remember one spring day when the other trees didn't have many blossoms, but that old tree was covered with them like snow. I've never seen so many blossoms on one tree. But Father said, reckoned it's going to be that old tree's last year. Why did he say that, William? He told us that an apple tree puts out its most beautiful bloom just before it dies. I never knew that, Will. He was right. The next year the old tree was dead. What is it, my dear? Nothing. You look like you're going to cry. Don't do that. Mother asked after the boys. You didn't tell her about Richard? No, of course not, no. I just told her that we'd seen Jonas and how well he looked. How smart he looked. So proud. He, he looked so proud and sure of himself. I am proud of him, William. I'm proud of both my sons. Yes. Even though I don't agree with Richard anymore, he's still my son. 
We have two clever sons, Annie. Yes, but Jonas is right. We were wrong to think the king's ways were best. Jonas is right, isn't he, Will? He is that, my dear. The sooner the king goes, the better. He's a bad man, a bad king. To think our son is going to kill him. To think that. And then Jonas says the war will be over. It be all over, Will. Thank God. Thank the Lord. No more killing. Jonas says we'll be building a new life. Yes. A good life for all. I'll tell you something, Annie. The other day, I heard a wind rising along the road. A strange wind. I heard it how, yet it didn't move the leaves. So I thought, why, that must be Satan. I thought, that's surely Satan passing overhead. Satan, the horse God rides. The wrath of God must be going by, I thought. You believe in hell, don't you, Will? I do. I believe in hell and all its torments. But none of us are going there, are we, Will? I mean... No. And I don't fear death, either. As a good Christian, you needn't fear death if you live so that death finds us prepared for God. You've got to remember, the life God showed us through his only son and, in our turn, lives so that each day we can say to ourselves, Today I did God's will. Oh, Will, I hope he'll be all right. Richard? Our son. Don't start crying again. I can't help it. I'll try not to. Be strong. Try and be strong, my dear. When I was a little girl, I'd start crying suddenly for no reason at all. No reason? I just burst out crying and I didn't know why. But now I know. I'm crying for our boys, William. For our sons. Life has no place for me now. When my deed is completed, I must depart forever from the fleeting world. I must fall today like the last blossoms of the cherry and leave my ill fame to blow about in the wayward winds. Out of the depths I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his words do I hope. It is a perfect position. A clear view. And I'm close enough. They choose well. How long now? How long? There is nothing I can do now except wait. 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 Death has a thousand doors to let out life. Oh, dear God, I cannot escape and I must not fail. This thing I have to do for the lives I love best, they must live. But I'm afraid. Fear is growing over me like another skin. The king. The king is coming. My agony is complete. The fatal moment has come. I feel sick. I must stop trembling. I must be calm. Please, God. I must shoot. No. It is not the king. Some soldiers. 
I recognize them. Perhaps the king follows them. No. I cannot see King Charles. There is no sign. Royalists, come. You are to be hanged. But the king oh. still lives, so you will die. Richard? What, what of Richard? He has failed. The king lives. It has been a failure. A failure. Guard, bring uh, him this way. We will hang him by his royalist neck. Yes, sir. <laughs> you're you're going to kill Richard's family, too? Yes. But, Captain, they've done no harm. It isn't fair to kill them. In God's name, they isn't soldiers. They... No more talk. I never knowed such wickedness. Bring him. Yes, sir. Come and damn you to hell. I call down the curse of the damn money. Celia. Celia. Richard. Oh. <laughs> Richard! Celia, my sweet Celia, you are free. Free? Yes, praise God, you walked the land. You're no longer a prisoner. Richard, I don't understand. You... But you've been held by the Puritans as a prisoner. No, Richard, not me. No? No, I, I have never been a prisoner. My love, what are you talking about? It's you who's been a prisoner. What is happening? But wait. My parents and my sister Mary, they are prisoners, aren't they? No, Richard. What makes you think that? Why, I saw them only this morning. They have not been held as hostages. Hostages? No. Then my sister has lied to me. Mary? What do you mean? Oh, dear God, I begin to see it all now. What, Richard? Tell me what this is all about. How have you escaped? When I heard... I have been held in a cow shed not far from here. By a division of the parliamentarians under Captain Corley's. Yes. Oh, listen, my dear one. What I'm about to tell you is the absolute truth. Though it sounds like a dream. A terrible dream. So you waited there to shoot the king. Oh, my poor love. Believing we would die... But the king did not pass. I was ready, but he did not come my way. What happened? I don't know. King Charles did not pass. And when the crowd started breaking up, I, I knew he would not be coming, so I came away. And I was on my way back to where Captain Corlett and his men are camped, to plead with him to release you and my family, even if he killed me. And I saw you. Oh, thank the good Lord you did. Thank God. Well, now what will you do? First, I must see my family. Celia, I have been betrayed. I must see them. How could they do it? Your own family? Because of Jonas. But... No doubt Jonas persuaded Mary to lie to me. He's always been able to influence my little sister. But your parents? Perhaps they did not know. Or perhaps they are no longer on my side. Oh, to think that you knew nothing of all this. Nothing. I did not believe Jonas when he first told me. I suspected a plot. But I never thought that Mary would lie. Oh, Celia, I simply couldn't take the chance. If I refused to do it and you and my family were imprisoned, the captain would surely have had you hanged. Dear heart, I know. I know now you had no choice. I have been betrayed. Christ was betrayed and carried his cross. And in my intent, I have been guilty of betrayal also. No, Richard. You can't think of it that way. You couldn't do anything else. I see the track of King Charles' step, rimmed with blood and trailing sorrow across my life. Dear Richard. To think I was a picked marksman by the other side to kill my own king. How unreal and uncertain life has become. How much like a wild, fantastic dream. Yet, God watches over everything. And now... What now, Richard? I must rejoin my regiment. Yes. And I must confess. Tell them. Oh, Richard, you don't mean... I have to, Celia. My conscience drives me to do it. But what if... What if they think of it as... Treason? Yes. You came near to assassinating the king. You cannot tell them that. It is the truth. I shall tell them the truth. They could hang you, Richard. 
No. Go back if you must. But don't tell them. Please. You don't have to tell them now. They will hang you for that. Not the royalists. Not in these circumstances. Celia, listen. I'm a king's man, loyal to the king's cause, and the cause is strong, and my passion is strong. I cannot be other than honest to my own side. I cannot withhold this story. If they do not hear it from my lips, they will surely hear it from elsewhere. News can travel swiftly from one side to the other. Richard, I do not care about sides. I do not care on which side you fight, nor who wins. I only care that you are safe. Because I love you with all my heart. My dear Celia, your voice is like cool water after all the hot words. I love you so much. Then run free, Richard. Escape. Escape? Celia, there is no escape now. I must see to the end what has been started. There must be somewhere. There must be an escape somewhere. Escape or desertion. But Richard... My duty is to return to my regiment. Duty? Conscience? You talk of these things, but what of love, Richard? What of me? What of your love for me? If they take your life... In this world, no one knows how long a man may live. My love for you is as strong as ever. If you love me... I cannot love a dead man! Life is short. Love is long. Think of that, dear Celia. Even in the next world, my love will not die. Oh, Richard. I love you more than causes. More than the whole world. I have never met anyone in my life who suited me as well as you do. We go together. We fit. Richard, don't go, I beg you. Celia, you must understand. I must continue to try and preserve our values. I must continue to fight. We have to fight for what we believe in. I think it's God's way of working something out for the world. I don't know what exactly, but there must be a purpose in it or it wouldn't have happened. We have to be like Daniel or Shadrach. No matter how hopeless it looks, we must still be faithful. If not, everything our ancestors fought for will be lost. I couldn't stand to think about that. I have to devote myself for the rest of my days to trying to do what is right, as God gives me power to see what is right. To think that love makes us promise so much. Come with me, Celia, will you? To my parents' home? Please? All right, Richard. I'll come with you. You deceived me, Mary. You lied to me. She did what she thought to be right. No, Mother, I want to hear what Mary has to say. Mary, why did you do it? Joan said it would end the war. Don't distress yourself, dear. The lying. That's what hurts so deeply. Mother, you knew? Yes, Richard, I knew. All of you? You too, Father? We cannot deny it. We cannot deny it. Celia here knew nothing of all this. Mary, you lied to me about Celia. Yes, I did it. I did it. Calm yourself, Mary. What has brought you to this change of heart and mind? This is a Puritan house now. What? We are Puritans. Oh, no. No! Father. I am tired, my son. The world is a dung heap. It's not worth people being happy. To talk like that, it's so unlike you, Father. What sort of talk is this? People live suffering. The world is nothing but suffering. It's not worthwhile. Life is worthwhile. Life? Life's a fleeting dream, my son. It matters little when you go. A human life is of small value. No. It grieves me to hear you talk like this. We want the war to end. And you would have me murder the king? You would have me do that frightful thing? The king We is... no longer believe in the king. We don't want the king. We want him dead. You mean that? You really mean that? Yes. Yes. Truly, Jonas has done his work here. To turn my parents and sister against me? Oh, you've no conception of what this means. The king is a tyrant. But, mother... The Puritan way. No, no. If the king is a tyrant, the tyranny of one would still be preferable to that of the multitude. 
The tyranny of subjects is the most insupportable of all. What Jonas is doing is in the cause of freedom and a better life for our people. Why, you even begin to sound like Jonas. Freedom. I'm tired of this righteous talk about it. What of the faith? I have always been a defender of the faith and of the church. That I know is my strength with the people. I cannot change as you have changed. We want peace, Richard. I'm getting old and I catch myself dreaming of days gone by. I just want peace in our life. Who's coming? With Jonas! With soldiers! Richard, you must go quickly. I'll return to my regiment. Oh, dearest, go quickly. The back. Go the back way. Remember, wherever I go, I'm thinking of you. I think I'll be with you. Dearest. I love you. Oh, how I love you. Whatever comes of us, I'll die loving you. Goodbye. I may never see him again. Jonas, my dear son. Mother, has Richard been here? Uh, Richard. He's failed in his mission. The king still lives. Richard's escaped. I thought he might come here. Yeah, Celia, what are you doing here? Seeing treachery. What? Treachery. Richard, where is he? He has gone to serve his king, not to kill him. So you know? Yes. Yes, I know. And you've seen Richard? Jonas, listen. Yes, I have seen him. And I am sick at heart. To think that his own family should betray him so. War divides us. You know that. Oh, if only Richard would see it our way. He would never change sides. Never. Sides are human, like the people who compose them. And subject to change. Change? Can you change the course of the stars? We seek to bring a nobler age to this country. And what will you gain from this, Jonas? Gain? Oh, oh it's not for riches, not glory, nor honour that we fight, but to shape a new life for all people. A good England under Cromwell. Politics. Politics destroy the happiness of every being in this land. I find myself surrounded by hate and lies. Our laws will be fair. Unlike the laws of the pig Charles Stuart. A law is one thing, and a lie another. When a greedy and selfish king denies his people basic human rights, then the rule must be changed. If not by moral protest, then by force. There's no course of action that isn't justified in the defense of freedom. We will die for our ideals. Richard has ideals. We believe our ideals are worth dying for. And so does Richard. Oh, you're blinded by love, woman. You cannot or won't see things as they really are. Look at us. Free. Free as the birds, huh? Oh, the land belongs to us. But the bread belongs to him. The rivers are ours. But the fish are his. The forests belong to us. But not the wood. That's for the king. Everything's for the king. But we are fighting the good fight in the dirtiest campaign in the history of corrupt monarchy. And we are winning. The fabric is crumbling. The king's world is dying. You hate so much, don't you, Jonas? I think and act as I have to. I destroy people. Yes, history puts you in that position. Well, listen to the words of Cromwell. Men marching bravely to beating drums. Faces enthralled by glory. Ahead of us, a land of promise glowing in the sun. I'm tired. I'm tired of death. I thought I could save Richard from this horror. I thought I could save him for my love. But I've succeeded in nothing. Nothing! I think you'd better go home, my dear. Best go home now. You have heard the evidence against Corporal Kerslake and the verdict... Guilty! Guilty! Guilty. 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 Accused. Step forward. Corporal Kerslake, you have been found guilty of treason. By your own admission, you lay in wait for His Majesty King Charles with intent to shoot him dead with your musket. You were foiled because the king, in his wisdom, changed his plan and did not appear in the streets of Lost Withiel that day. Have you anything to say? Only that I've told the truth. That my family The was... king's life is more important than any of his subjects. You were prepared to take the life of a king, our master. 
In that, you risk not only death in this world, but a certainty of hell fire to all eternity. I will announce the sentence of this court. By order of the king's army, you are to be executed. <laughs> Accused may make his last plea. Wearing my king's colours, about to die, let me ask the question. For what am I dying? I'm confronted by a total uselessness. Therefore, on the threshold of my last hour, I bend my knees to my king, to my country, and to my people. To ask for mercy would be derision. You believe I must die. Then I must die. So be it. There is a sound of trumpets high up in the lonely place. Good luck will ride with your honour. You will conquer your enemies. But those who love you will betray you. The sky goes black. The sound of trumpets in the mountains has turned to thunder. Rain falls. Rain and tears. Tears and blood. The blood of men runs in the rivers. The rivers are red with blood. But all will end well. Enough. Have you a last wish? To die. To die in silence. King's Colours was written for radio by Roy Belitho, with Norman Bowler as Richard Kerslake, Neil Stacey as Captain Corlaise, and Mary Larkin as Celia. Others in the cast were Jacko, David Goodison, Jonas, Peter Wickham, Annie, Joan Matheson, Mary, Jane Knowles, Lord Varco and William, John Woodnut, and the Guard and Royalist Officer, Roy Spencer. The programme which came from Bristol was directed by Brian Miller.